Hi, my name is Julie Bradley. I'd like to discuss with you now how we teach handwriting or lettering to your children. Where we use graphemes or letters to represent the sounds that we're making. So we can have a simple manuscript style with uppercase and then move into a cursive version for our children as they reach middle upper primary. We really need to retain both forms throughout life, so we always throughout life need to keep a very simple manuscript that's legible and we also need to have a very fast and efficient form of cursive writing. Unfortunately today we're seeing a lot of children who are retaining print and script form throughout their lives where you really do need to move on to this cursive script form for um, speed, especially in, in exams and it's actually more difficult but shows a higher level of thinking for the brain um, when the child is able to actually cursive write and translate that information into cursive form. Is writing important? Yes, because it's very much needed for social function. So we have to be able to use a very clear script when we fill in labels and forms or cards or envelopes and that's just so that people get the information that they need from what we've written. So I don't know if you've noticed, but when I look at forms now, they now put in very red or bold or um, large letters that you need to write or print in a very clear script, whether it be block letters or, or whatever. So they're finding it obviously quite difficult to read some people's writing. We need it for examinations because when our children get to year 12, they're asked to write continuously for a period of three hours and that just doesn't happen. They have to build up the strength in their fingers and arms to be able to cope with that and have a very efficient style to get through the examination and get all the information they need to get down on paper within the time. Some of them may write 28 pages in a three hour exam, so it's very important that they, they do have that skill. It's very frustrating for a child to come out of an exam and the only reason they feel frustrated is because they haven't been able to keep their writing up to their brain um, activity. So they haven't been able to get all their thoughts down on paper. And of course we need it for spelling too because if a word is hard to read, it may actually have the correct letters in it, it just may be hard for the reader to decipher what the letters are. And of course if children don't see the writing as important then they're not going to put the effort in. So we have to make a big to-do about how important it is to have a good script. Now where did writing come from? Well originally it was just marks on clay or stone or wood and then it was mostly separate letters and the emphasis was on the downward stroke because of the quill pen. So if you looked at doing a D for instance, it was the down strokes or on a G or anything, it was the down strokes that took um, were the emphasis because that's how the quill had to work. You didn't have a D going around and back up and down as later happened. So um, that is why the alphabet originated in that way with that emphasis. Then we went on to using pens and things so we had flexible nibs so it didn't really matter and we could start doing upstrokes or downstrokes. We didn't need to emphasise the downward stroke as much with the ballpoint pens and so our style has evolved over time. Initially it was very um, fancy, whereas now it's got to be quite simple. We also have to have a good um, ability to type easily on the computer and what we really need our children to get to with computer skills is being able to, to type with their four fingers and the thumb for the spacebar so that they're efficient typers and they'll, be, they'll learn a whole bank of words just from long-term memory where they'll be able to just type in without even thinking about how their fingers are moving. So they should be able to write on a, on a computer nearly as fast as they can think. But they really have to learn good keyboard skills. So how does handwriting or penmanship um, develop and what does it involve? Well, it of course demands good eye-hand coordination. So we know that everything moves from the gross motor to the fine motor. So initially this means your child having lots of 
play with big things, balls, bats, that type of thing. Lots of Play-Doh, water play, um, sand play, where they're having to manipulate finer things such as Lego and um, jigsaws or finer play equipment. And through all that activity, they start to develop a nice strong pincer grip, which is what we need. They need to have good dexterity and flexibility in their fingers and joints and hands so that they're able to move and control the, the, the hand or the fingers to control a pencil or a writing tool. And they've got to have that good muscle strength, of course, to be able to continue the, the movement. What you find in young children who don't have good strong hand muscle strength is that they go into incorrect grips which then are very hard to correct or break habits of once they start school and with the amount of work we do. So what we really need to have happen for our young children is lots and lots of eye-hand coordination activity, both gross motor and fine motor. So when they start getting into, say, four, where they're given tools at school, they're going to have the muscle strength to be able to hold a writing tool correctly. Now, it's interesting to note that when a child paints at an easel with a paintbrush, it generally forces a correct pencil grip for them. So that's why we need to do lots and lots of painting in our kindy and pre-primary years. Once they start to cut and hold pencils, it's very important that that muscle strength is there and we're not getting those incorrect grips so that the child is able to go to like the dart throwing grip. So really it is the thumb and the tall man holding the pencil with the pointer resting on top. And, um, and the pencil should be resting back on the hand. We don't want children holding the pencil upright or coming in with these funny grips where they have to lock the joint to get control of the pencil. If it is a big problem for a child, we can also go to holding the pencil between pencil and tall man for a short term until they get that feeling of correct grip and then move them over to the original grip. Now, big tools don't help a young child either. The bigger the tool, actually, the more awkward it is for us to use. So for me as an adult, something that width is even quite difficult, and my hand is a lot bigger than that of a young child. So for a young child, really, giving them big chalks or big fat textures might not be the way to go. Um, so something size appropriate to the size of their hands and fingers is more ideal. When the child positions their paper on a table, it's very important too that the paper is positioned so that if the arms rest on the desk, the paper can fit within that angle. And then the hand, with a bit of adjusting, then the hand can move across the page with the elbow being the pivot. If they go into an incorrect grip, then they have to lock in the hand and then what you find is it becomes a gross motor movement and the movement has to come from the shoulder joint, which was never meant for that much movement. It should be the fingers moving across the page with the elbow as the, as the pivot point. And that's how we want them to develop from that young age so that they develop, develop some real efficient and time effective um, writing. So they're fast and efficient.